10 Key Points About Organophosphate Poisoning Point number 1. Organophosphate Basics Organophosphates are chemicals commonly found in insecticides and pesticides. These substances disrupt the nervous system by inhibiting acetylcholinesterase, an enzyme crucial for breaking down the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. This disruption leads to an excess of acetylcholine, causing a range of symptoms. Point number two, clinical features of organophosphate poisoning. Organophosphate poisoning manifests through a variety of symptoms, often grouped as muscarinic, nicotinic, and central nervous system effects. Muscarinic effects include gastrointestinal issues, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, respiratory distress, bronchospasm, wheezing, cardiovascular changes, bradycardia, hypotension, genitourinary problems, urinary incontinence, and ocular symptoms, meiosis. Nicotinic effects involve neuromuscular issues, muscle twitching, weakness, paralysis, and central nervous system disturbances, anxiety, seizures, coma. Remember these two memory aids. First, DUMBLES, which stands for diarrhea, urination, meiosis, bronchorrhea, bradycardia, emesis, lacrimation, and salivation. Second, SLUDGE, which stands for salivation, lacrimation, urination, defecation, and emesis. These help in recognizing muscarinic symptoms. Point number three, sources of exposure. Exposure to organophosphates can occur through various sources, including insecticides and fertilizers, surface and room sprays, baits for cockroaches, shampoos against head lice, pet preparations, crop protection and livestock dipping, fumigation, nerve agents such as sarin. Point number four, diagnosing organophosphate poisoning. Diagnosis primarily relies on the patient's history of exposure and presenting symptoms. However, you can confirm the diagnosis and assess the severity using laboratory tests. Red blood cell acetylcholinesterase activity provides a definitive diagnosis and helps monitor therapy. Significant clinical features manifest when levels fall below 25% of normal activity. Plasma cholinesterase activity acts as a sensitive marker for anticholinesterase exposure. Its rapid decline and recovery four to six weeks compared to red blood cell activity helps determine if the plasma concentration of the anticholinesterase is negligible. Electrolytes and renal function monitoring is essential as poisoning can lead to metabolic acidosis and renal failure. Point number five, emergency management. Immediate management focuses on stabilizing the patient and providing supportive care. Decontamination. Remove contaminated clothing and wash exposed skin thoroughly with soap and water. For recent ingestions, administer activated charcoal. Irrigate exposed eyes with copious amounts of water. Airway management. Assess and secure the airway, being prepared to manage respiratory compromise. This may involve supplemental oxygen, airway adjuncts, or mechanical ventilation. Medications, atropine, an anticholinergic agent, is the first-line treatment, blocking acetylcholine's effects at muscarinic receptors. Administer atropine intravenously until muscarinic symptoms like bradycardia and bronchospasm subside. Pralidoxime, also known as 2PM, a cholinesterase reactivator, reverses organophosphate binding to acetylcholinesterase. Administer it promptly, ideally within the first few hours of exposure, to prevent the aging process that renders acetylcholinesterase irreversibly inhibited. Point number six, supportive care and monitoring. Continuous monitoring and supportive care are critical. Continuous cardiac monitoring helps detect arrhythmias and hemodynamic instability. Frequent neurological assessments are crucial to monitor for seizures and mental status changes. Intravenous fluids maintain adequate hydration. Electrolyte correction addresses any imbalances. Point number seven, 
Recognizing complications. Be aware of potential complications. Respiratory failure may arise from muscle weakness and excessive respiratory secretions. Cardiovascular collapse can result from bradycardia and hypotension. Seizures and coma may occur in severe poisoning. Intermediate syndrome, a delayed complication, presents with muscle weakness 24 to 96 hours post-exposure. Closely monitor patients during this period. Point number eight, the aging phenomenon. Organophosphates, unlike carbamates, undergo an aging process where they irreversibly bind to acetylcholinesterase. This renders the enzyme permanently inactive, making pralidoxime ineffective. The time for aging varies among different agents. Point number nine, patient education. Patient education is vital for preventing future exposures. Emphasize. Safe handling and storage of pesticides, educate patients about the risks and the importance of following safety guidelines. Protective clothing, stress the use of appropriate personal protective equipment when handling pesticides. Seeking immediate medical attention, advise patients to seek help immediately if they experience any poisoning symptoms. Point number 10, prognosis and follow-up. The prognosis depends on the severity of exposure, promptness of treatment, and the presence of complications. Mild to moderate poisoning often results in full recovery with proper treatment. However, severe poisoning can be fatal or lead to long-term neurological consequences. Ensure appropriate follow-up to detect and manage any delayed effects. Question number one. Which of the following statements regarding the treatment of organophosphate poisoning is false? The correct answer is C. When treating a patient with organophosphate poisoning, the patient's clothing should be removed to prevent ongoing dermal absorption, atropine should be dosed to affect, targeting the drying of secretions, and the patient may require intubation for airway protection. Question number two. A patient is brought to the emergency department after being exposed to an organophosphate. The patient is severely symptomatic and atropine is given. When should atropine treatment be discontinued? The correct answer is A. For severely symptomatic patients due to organophosphate poisoning, atropine treatment should be discontinued only when secretions have stopped. Question number three. Which of the following symptoms is not typically associated with organophosphate poisoning? The correct answer is A. Meiosis or pinpoint pupils, diaphoresis, diarrhea, and excessive salivation are typical symptoms associated with organophosphate poisoning. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.